Okay, it may not look like it, but this is in fact a digital camera that I made out of a flatbed scanner and parts from an overhead projector. Now I feel like I should be up front with you at the start of this video before you go and invest lots of your spare time. The end results I got out of this camera are really, really poor. And actually, so what we've got here is a video that consists of quite a lot of pointless tinkering for not a very satisfying end result. So I feel like I should mention that to you right up front. If you, if you haven't got the patience to sit through that kind of nonsense, then please do click away and watch one of my other videos or something else. If, on the other hand, you would like to watch me mucking about pointlessly with various bits of optics and machines and so on and ending up being able to take an incredibly blurry photograph with it then carry on watching. There are links in the video description if you want to click to the more interesting bits well I think they may be more interesting. So just up front there you go. This is my very very terrible digital camera. Okay this thing here is a projector. Now it doesn't look much like a projector that you might be familiar with. This is a Nobo 509 400 watt portable overhead projector. Now before the days of digital projectors which we got very cheaply and commonly these days everybody used to use overhead projectors and there are two basic models of these. There was one that had a huge base with an illuminated lamp assembly underneath that came up through a Fresnel lens and then there were these which are the portable type and this has got a Fresnel reflector and a halogen lamp up here, which projects down onto the material to be projected, reflects back up into a lens and then out through a mirror here at the top. So, and the, the projection slides we used to use with these were like A4 sheets of acetate with, which were transparent with the material printed onto them either in colour or black and white or you had pens that you could draw on. And people would use this to project images onto a wall for presentations and all kinds of things. Obviously things have moved on and it's all digital these days. However, we're going to see if we can make something interesting out of this widget. We're going to see if we can make an enormously impractical digital camera. So the interesting thing about these is that in addition to being projectors, in theory this thing is also kind of a camera. So I've got it pointing out the window there, and we can't actually see anything at the moment, but I'm going to get a big sheet of card so I can shade this front. Let's just use this thing here. So now if I shade here, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I have got an image here of the window, and it is a focusable image of stuff that's going on out there. So, that's the camera part of the thing. Now all we need is some way of capturing the image that falls onto there. And I thought, what better than a flatbed scanner? So this is an old USB flatbed scanner, which is pretty much defunct now. It won't work with Windows 10. It does work with Windows 98 or Windows XP. But we'll find a way of making this work. And I thought if we get that on there, let's just have a look. So we won't obviously have the piece of paper on there, but there we go, we've got a focusable image on the bed of the camera. And obviously we can use the, the mirror there to figure out how to make that work. Now, of course, this alone is not a camera. So what we need to do, we will need to disable the illumination in this scanner. We will need to build an enclosure to shut out all, all of the light except for the little bit that's falling on the scanner. So some sort of cone type arrangement here. And I think we might just strip off some of the redundant bits and pieces of framework here. Certainly don't need the lamp assembly anymore. Don't need most of the electrics. And what we're going to do is try to make that into a digital camera. Now in theory that will make a digital camera which is A4 size in sensor size and is 1200 dots per inch resolution which by my calculation works out to be about 139 megapixels. However, it will take a very long time to scan the image. So we'll get some interesting effects 
when we try and take pictures with this. But anyway, let's get started on stripping this down to make it into a, a usable piece of kit. Now I think I'm going to have that Fresnel reflector off of there because we can do some interesting things with that in itself. Let's just have a look at this now we've got it out of here. Brilliant. So what we've got actually here is a Fresnel reflector. And this is actually equivalent to a parabolic reflector lens, but of course it has almost no thickness. So we can use this for focusing the sun's rays. Maybe we'll even succeed in cooking something with it. But we've got a decent... In fact, you can see it almost has... It almost appears to have a curvature to it when you look at the reflections. But the curvature is all built into the actual surface rather than the thickness. Anyway, so that's that. We've just taken that off there because it would be a terrible shame to damage that. And then I'm just going to strip down some of this other stuff and get rid of some of the electricals because we don't need them. Potentially useful little micro switch there. That is that piece. So that's as stripped down as that's going to get, which is good. That's interesting. It's melted there. Must have overheated at some point. Anyway, so that's that bit. Now we've got to work on the scanner. Okay, now there are two different types of document scanner, flatbed scanner like this. There are those which have a colour sensor and have a little fluorescent lamp in there that illuminates the subject white and they scan in colour. This is not one of those types. This is actually the type where it has a monochrome sensor bar in there and it has red, green and blue LEDs 
which flash rapidly in sequence and so it's capturing a line of red, green or blue and then compositing that into an image. Now, what I need to try to do is locate the LEDs so that I can disable them. Now, I'm hoping I can do that without destroying the scanner completely. This part is on a spring, okay, that's good to know. That must rub up against the inside of the glass. Okay, what I really need to do is figure out which bit of this is the LEDs and see if I can just snip their legs off or something. That may not be easy. this clip together. There must be a little thing releasing this somewhere. skills. Okay, I'm going to work on the assumption that this strip here is the sensor itself and this strip here is the illumination. So we're going to try and go in from the front. Okay, so I think what we have here is a light guide. It seems to be made of glass actually. So we're going to very carefully Ease that out. Yeah, that's the that's the illumination element. Oh, that's going to come out without breaking. Oh, we might be lucky. Okay, so somewhere. Okay, so those must be the LEDs right there at the end. I guess. Disable the LEDs, and assuming it still works when I have, then we've done the job. Okay, so one of two different things might have just happened here. I've 
snipped out this little circuit board at the end here, which I'm pretty sure had some little surface mount LEDs on it. So I will either just have disabled the illumination, or possibly I will have just destroyed the scanner completely. Time will tell. Fortunately, again, as this thing was destined for the scrap heap, I don't have to weep and be too sad about the fact that we might have destroyed a valuable piece of equipment. Right, that's it all back together. Let's see if we can scan. Obviously, it won't scan a piece of paper now, but if I cover up and hold up to the light, we should be able to scan something and get some some kind of image. Anyway, let's have a go. <coughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually while we're here. So the lid's going to come off as well while we're here. Just undo those little spring clips there. It just, just does pry off the right and proper application of force and technique just into there. There we go. Can't see the joint. Right. Okay, so. Together. and let's see if we can scan anything. I could have just destroyed this completely and I won't be all that surprised if that's what's just happened because I just hacked around inside some rather delicate electronics. But anyway... Let's have a go. In order to get this scanner working, because it's so old and it only has drivers for up to Windows XP, I've had to load Ubuntu Linux in a VM on here, and I'm using a thing called Simple Scan, which just knows how to talk to scanners, so that's okay. So what I'm expecting to do here is, well, I'm hoping, yeah, well, we've got movement of the carriage back towards the home position, that's, all, that's a hopeful sign. Yep. And obviously there's no illumination of the scanner itself now, but what I'm hoping we're going to find is that the natural illumination, yes, I've got my hand on here, and so I'm just blocking out the light. So with natural illumination and my hand on the glass, I kind of captured an, an image of some sort. So I'm going to call that a success for now. So the next thing to do is assemble this all together, put the scanner together with the parts of the projector. I need to make a lightproof shroud to exclude all sort of sideways light coming into this scanner. And then we're going to go out and take some pictures. Okay. Stick some double sided foam pads on there to hold that in place. Try and get this so that the bed is level with this end and central over there. That's good, that's not going anywhere. Brilliant. Okay, next I've just got some nice big pieces of corrugated cardboard. I'm going to cut a shroud, cut four pieces to make a sort of pyramid shaped shroud around that. cut out while I was cutting this card so I pressed on and finished it anyway. So this is the kind of assembled device. It's not quite quite in the right place and 
I did a few test runs with this and all I capture with it is a blank white page even when I cut down I think there's just too much light coming into it and I think they've got stray light coming in through here and I think actually this lens is probably actually capturing too much light because even when I slimmed that down I made a little aperture just like a, a tiny little hole about a centimetre across and masked that off I just about started to get images there so I think there's just too much light coming in here I don't actually think I need this lens assembly at all because I don't really think I need to capture that much light so I'm going to rethink what we've done here and remake this and I might actually discard nearly all of the projector components of this device I may retain the mirror because that makes it convenient to hold this thing flat while it takes a picture in a particular direction so we'll see if I can f figure out a different way of fitting that mirror to whatever we end up with so I'm going to tear this down for now and I think I'm going to remake this pyramid section out of card that is matte black on the inside as well so that I don't get any stray reflections inside the box as well. But I think we will re remake this as a pinhole camera with just a tiny tiny pinhole to capture the image. That way it won't need focusing as well which will be all an added benefit and make it easier to use. Okay, so that's the new shroud, and that's going to go on there like that. And it's slightly larger than the scanner glass in every direction, and I did it that way on purpose, so we wouldn't lose any of the sensor capacity. So I'm now just going to tape that down to the scanner body itself. Now you might be wondering why I've left that aperture so very big there. I'm actually going to cut another piece of card with a tiny pinhole in it, and that will fit on top of that. And that way I can change out that pinhole for different sizes depending on what kind of lighting conditions I've got. Okay now I have noticed there are a few little places on the back there where light can get in underneath so let's just close those off as well. Pretty good. Right okay let's put a pinhole on there and then see if we can actually take a photograph of it with it if I just point it off to one side like this. Okay, so the moment truth is here. I've got the camera just propped up there on the roll of duct tape, pointing out of the window, and then I've got simple scan here. So let's see if we can capture an image on just the pinhole version of this scanner. Here goes. Well, we got something there. I don't know what that is though. That is not a recognisable image. I think I might have damaged the scanner when I cut those LEDs out. What a shame. Okay, looks like I've destroyed my scanner. I've got some sort of image there. I don't know if that's a picture of 
Mm, could be a picture of the window sill there, maybe, I don't know. Possibly. Just one more thing to try, just to make sure this isn't just an abundance of light. I've got my finger over the pinhole now. Let's just try scanning again. Now, if the imaging component is working at all, we should just get plain black here. Yeah, interesting. Plain white. That might mean it's trying to overcompensate for the exposure. Or it might just mean I've completely broken it. OK, so we're going to stop that project there. And I think, in all likelihood, I destroyed the scanner when I clipped those LEDs out of the little scanning bar, which I had to do because that would have destroyed the, the capability of this to take photographs. So never mind, that's been an interesting experiment, but unfortunately a failure. I will try this again though. I'm going to see if I can get a hold of a scanner with a fluorescent tube in there, because that will be easier to disable, and then I will still have the imaging component that works. OK, so now I thought I'd broken this scanner in my attempts to turn it into the sensor for my weird digital camera. And I went off and ordered a new scanner from, well, a second-hand scanner from eBay that I could use, but unfortunately that turned up broken. So I've gone back to this one to see if I could figure out what I've done wrong and see if I could actually find some way of getting this working. And the first thing I thought is maybe it's that little hole there. There's a pin on the lid, which I've discarded, which engages in that hole and activates a little switch. And I thought maybe it won't scan unless that switch is... But that's not what it was. It was actually something quite a bit more interesting. So we're going to open this up and I'll show you what made all of the difference. So, spoilers, I have actually got it kind of working again now. So we will be trying to use this scanner as the sensor for our weird camera. So we'll just get it hooked up to the computer and I'll show you what's actually happening and what I've discovered. OK, so let's have a look and see what happens when I scan with the scanner completely put together like that. Well, we can see we're just getting a completely white page. So that's no use to me at all. So I'm going to stop that there. And then the scanner carriage returns to its home position. Now, what I'm going to do now is just take the top off the scanner. Now, this was pretty much trial and error by which I hit up upon this. But when I run it with this top completely missing, like this, have a look at what I get now. OK, so that's not pretty, but we are getting a different result. And I figured out why. Have you ever wondered what your scanner is doing when it does this at the start of a scan? So have you ever wondered why it does that little dance where it goes back and forth before it actually starts scanning? Well, I've figured out what it's actually doing. And I'll show you. What it's doing, inside the glass, this is the underside of the case, there's this white strip here. And this is a calibration strip. And so what's happening before it starts scanning is the sensor head is moving back and just scanning that white strip. And essentially it's saying to itself, what does white look like today? And so it's trying to scan this white strip, but of course I've destroyed the LED illumination in here by snipping out those LEDs. So actually when it looks at that white strip, it's just seeing black. And as a result, it's completely overcompensating and scanning a washed out white page. Now when I leave that off, and it's not when it does its calibration scan, instead of scanning that white strip, it's scanning the open air, it's calibrating differently. So we can use this to our advantage. So what I think I'm going to be able to do is actually to use that calibration as like an auto-exposure thing, and then we can have it take a picture. 
So I think probably the simplest way to do that, well I'm not going to say it's simple, but I think probably the most straightforward way to do that is for me to just cut away the plastic casing here, exposing a bit more of the glass, so that when it goes to do its calibration scan, it will be looking out through glass rather than trying to look at opaque white paper or tape or whatever that is. So I probably can cut that away with a sharp knife, just score it a few times, or maybe a Dremel or something like that. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And then I will be able to replace that lid on there. Now I could, if that doesn't work, just use the naked scanner mechanism in the back of my camera. But I'm a tiny bit reluctant to do that, just because the parts are a little bit vulnerable to movement. There's this part, this end of the scanner is not actually held down at all and so in the back of a camera there's going to be all sorts of vibration and it won't work all that well. This glass in the scanner is actually intended to be part of the carriage mechanism so as it's going along this part here which is the sensor bar is sprung and it presses up against the glass on these little nylon runners here and so it's sliding on the back of the glass to get, give it a really nice smooth run. So I don't want to interrupt that, I'm going to try and preserve that. So the next thing to do is going to be to try to cut away this bit of plastic here and expose a bit more glass where that white calibration strip is. Okay, I can feel I've cut through to the glass there now. So actually now it's just a case of cutting now down there. Be very careful now that I don't crack the glass because that would be a real shame since we seem to have actually done what we set out to do here. Okay, so there we go. That's the piece cut off with the white calibration strip on the bottom of it. I can't quite believe that worked so easily, but there we are. So, let's get that reassembled upstairs and see what it scans like now. Right, let's see what kind of a result we get this time round. I'm going to put my hand on there actually and see if we can scan some sort of image or silhouette of my hand. Well, I'm not really all that sure what we got there, but we got something. So that's good. So we're going to now, or maybe tomorrow, assemble this pinhole camera front onto the thing. Okay, today is, I hope, the day we're going to get a recognisable image out of this weird scanner-based digital camera. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to take this shroud off again, I'm going to move it along a little bit, and I'm going to expose that uh, auto exposure, that calibration strip, I'm going to expose that to the outside world so that the camera can meter the light outside of the lens. I'm going to fit the original lens off of that overhead projector onto here. Fortunately that will go on nice and easy because it's got some screw mounting holes but also I just need to cut that hole circular just smaller than that rim and then we'll fix that on there and then we'll have proper focusing and I don't need to have a pinhole aperture so we can have a decent amount of light entering the camera. Then we're going to put it all back together and in theory we should get a photograph from it.
Right, so while we're waiting for the computer to boot up, let's just have a recap of what changes we've made today. So I've shaved a bit off the side of the hood here, and I've left the calibration area open to the outside world. So the notion is that the camera or the sensor will calibrate itself based on ambient light, and then we'll take a picture inside here. The other major change I've done is I've fitted the old overhead projector lens to the front of the hood. I cut a circle there and I've actually just screwed that on. So we've got a lens instead of just an aperture, which means more light, but it does mean it needs focusing. If it was a pinhole, pinhole cameras never need focusing, but this one will now. But that's fine because we will have depth of field now, so hopefully we've got everything right. So we're just going to boot up the computer and then we're going to try attaching it and we're going to see if we can take a picture. So just for the purpose of the demo, I've got it just propped up on the roll of duct tape there and it's pointing out of the window. So we'll see if we can take a picture of something that's outside. We should get a picture, well, that looks, I don't know, if it all goes well, a picture that looks something like this. Okay, well, here we go, moment of truth. Okay, completely black page. Not tremendously encouraging. However, I think I know what might be going on here. What I suspect is happening is actually when it goes to do the metering here in the calibration area, it's probably just far too bright here, and so it's ramping the gain right down, and we're not getting any image when it goes to sense inside of here. So that's easy to fix, I think. All I need to do is find something that's semi-opaque and tape it over there, just to block out 50% of the light and I'm going to use a piece of greaseproof paper for that or if I can find some I'll use some uh, kind of semi-opaque tape. Okay we're going to try with this stuff. I've got some white electrical tape here and as you can see light does penetrate through it but only probably about 20% of the ambient light so just going to cut a strip of that and tape it over what is essentially the light metering aperture here. Now, let's see if that makes a difference. Hey, look, we're getting an image, we're getting part of an image. Yes, in fact, I believe that's parts of plant pots. We're getting something. Okay, we're still way under calibrated though, I think we're way underexposed. So another strip of tape over that exposure aperture. I am going to save this now so that you, and I'll put it up on the screen right now so that you can have a look at it yourself. It does look like it's not actually working for these parts of the image at the end here. Okay, let's go. Well, we definitely got something there. That feature there is very definitely the plant pot that this thing is directly pointing at. Let's see if we can get the focus a little bit better. So I'll try turning it a quarter turn clockwise. And we'll see if that's better or worse.
I would say worse. Right, so we'll turn it a half turn the other way. Oh, we're at the limit of focus there. Well, I never. Okay. Right, what we're going to do now is put something a bit more recognisable in the spotlight. And we'll see if we get a picture of it. Okay, let's see what we get. Not an awful lot. <laughs> okay, one more try. Yes, there it is. <laughs> that might not look very much, but we've actually taken a photograph there of something. I'll show you what it is actually, and we'll compare the quality of this image against the quality of what the camcorder can do. So there we go, that thing there. Look, we've taken a photograph of this owl figure. How about that? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so, there we go. That is my rubbish digital camera made from a document scanner. Now, there's probably some room for improvement there. But I'm kind of running out of ideas at this point, so I'm going to put this video up now and leave it over to you guys. Can you think of a way of improving this? I mean, other than just throwing it all away and starting again. Post in the comments if you've got some suggestions on what I can try. I am open to ideas. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.